Welcome back to another GB Studio tutorial. My name is Robert and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create object permanence between scenes or it make it look like there's object permanence between scenes. For example, here's a bike. I'm going to leave the scene and then I'm going to come back and then the bike is going to still be there. And if I leave, I can put it in this scene and then and then uh, it looks effortless, but um, there is three main things you need to do in order to make this happen and I'll show you how to do them in this video. So before I start, I just want to thank you for all the feedback I've received on this game so far. I've already started compiling it into actionable tasks so I can improve the game, and I thank you very much if you're one of the ones that submitted some feedback. I will probably close the submissions for the feedback um, tomorrow or Monday, and I'll start working on the improvements for this, and then hopefully in another two weeks I can give you another update. So let's get down to business with this. So um, the, there are three things that you need to know with this and obviously one of them is that there is the bike in the scene so it's an actor, it's its own actor and then to make the player look like it's riding a bike you need to you need to have a second uh, animation state and that one has to have all of the frames with a bike on it so this is a big task is basically making your sprite sheet have um, both your walking animations and the cycling animations and then you create a new animation state here and then you can rename it to whatever you want as long as you know what it is and so that means you have two states one that's with a bike and one that's without a bike and then the third thing is on the scene initiate that you have the bikes in you need to make sure that you're setting uh, for example, the speed of the player, the animation speed of the player, the button for getting off the bike, and also setting the bike in the correct position or hiding the bike, depending on um, if the bike should be uh, viewed as an actor or if it's on you. So obviously, step one would be to make your character have two states, one where it's cycling and one where it's not. Then it would be to add a bike to the scene, and the bike is obviously its own actor and its own sprite, so it has two frame or two states as well. One is where it's facing different directions and it's visible. And then the other one is hidden where there are no uh, tiles here at all. And I'll show you why in a minute. So first of all, we'll imagine that our player is just normally walking around and they come to interact with this bike. So what I do is I set the player to the animation state of the bike. So it looks like the player's on the bike. Then I set their movement speed. So it's uh, to two rather than one. So it's twice as fast. I'm also setting the animation speed on everything to five so this is just here and then i'm also setting the bicycle value there's a, a global variable called bicycle and it's set to zero and what this means is that the bike is not in any scene it's in or the player is riding the bike so obviously that's logic that i've set up that i know so if if the bicycle is zero it means the player is riding the bike so if you continue if we continue on we also then hide the bike because we're now the player is now on the bike so that we should hide this bike and we also set the position to zero zero which is the top up the very top in the corner and the reason why we do this is because it has a collision box so i'm just sending it away basically so that it's not like going to be there another way of doing it would be just to deactivate it but I prefer not to deactivate it so that it can still perform tasks so it's just hidden and moved away and then we have a attached script uh, to the B button which means that when we're on the bike if we press B it means that we get off the bike and when we get off the bike we we set we we store the players variables uh, like their position in these two variables here which are just global variables and um, just player X and player Y um, and then I'm setting the position of the bike to that exact um, thing. So then the bike is exactly where we are. And then I'm setting the player back to the default animation state, which is then without the bike. Setting the bike to default, which is where you can see the bike. And then I'm setting the movement speed for the player back to one. And then removing the script from the B button. And because this is scene 10, I believe. Yeah, scene 10. I've set the bicycle value or variable to 10. And that means when this actor is initiated, you see here, um, if the bicycle value is 10, which it would be if we'd got off the bike and left it in the scene, we set the position of the bike to right here. 
and obviously it's automatically showing when we start so if it's not scene 10 it's, or bicycle value 10 then we have to hide the bike so then it's um, you know it's not visible to the player and another thing I've realized is very important is on update you press this keep running while off screen um, and this means that even if you're not in the screen space of the hidden bike the bike will still um, get put to you when you press B to get off your bike so make sure you take this keep running while off screen so now we're going to take a look at the scene initiate so this means imagine we come into the scene from a different scene we need to know is the player on the bicycle and this obviously if it's zero it means the player is on the bicycle so we set their animation state to bike press B and then we can have the attached script to V button where it sets the bike back to the it sets the bike to the player's position and shows it and sets the player's state back to default and the bike is obviously shown as well um, and also the speeds and animation speeds are back to normal and then we can remove that B button from the player and set the bicycle value to 10. So every scene that you have you need to have a different bicycle value in order to um, set it to the correct scene Otherwise, it will just show up in every scene. This, this bicycle value is quite important. So obviously that was a quick run through, but basically you want to have an actor that is the bike when you're not on it. You want to hide that actor when you are on the bike because your animation state has changed to make it look like you're on a bike. And then when you enter the scene, you want to make sure you're checking to see if you're on the bike or if the scene has the bike in. And if it doesn't have the bike in and you're not on the bike, then you're, you look normal, you're not on the bike, and the bike is hidden from the scene. Hopefully that's kind of um, made you think about how you can have permanent objects the player interacts with between scenes. Um, and I'll just show you as well that each um, scene, so this was scene 9, so you'd expect it to have um, bicycle value 9 when we get off the bike. And that is the basics of it. So obviously if you have any scenes that you don't want the bike to go into, just have a... Uh, a trigger that says you can't enter and then on the else you would uh, you know change the scene so if you're on the bike the value is obviously zero so in this case you can't enter the building and then I actually just stop the script there and otherwise I just change the scene to get into the arcade for example so because we have this bicycle value we can conduct scene we can conduct checks wherever you want to make sure the player doesn't go into a place that they shouldn't on the bike or vice versa. If we didn't have this attached script to B button to get off the bike, then we would not be able to get off the bike. For example, in Pokemon, I remember that there were scenes that you couldn't get off your bike. So if you wanted to do that, it would just be to just not give the player that option. So yeah, I hope it, I hope I made it seem simple. Obviously, each of these bikes is technically the same. They just have a different value for their bicycle value to make sure that they're only visible in a certain scene. So make sure that if you're copy and pasting between levels that you are changing the bicycle value in order to make sure it only displays in that level. If you were to do this, you would probably, you might have a slightly different way of doing it. So make sure you understand the logic of and the reasoning behind why I did this before you jump in. Um, think about what the player needs to see and what needs to happen behind the scenes that you can hide from the player. For example, sending it up into the corner uh, or deactivating it or whatever. Obviously, keeping running while off screen is obviously another thing you need to keep in mind if you have bugs with it. So yeah, I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you very much to you guys. You guys are the absolute best. Remember to like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought of this video and if you think you'll use this in your own games or maybe it's inspired you to do something different. And I'll thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.